Cyberpunk 2077. Known pig of a game to run, having a very tough time on base last-gen consoles right now, and without a proper next-gen patch ready for launch, and only vaguely promised for some time in 2021, even the PS5 and Xbox Series X aren't letting the game reach its full potential. Sorry console players, but it's PC gamers who are the only ones with even a slight chance of running this game at its best, or even close to its best. And even that, as it turns out, is a bit of a crap fight. If you missed my video on the Series X and Xbox One X performance, by the way, it's linked below. While you're there, please sub, bell, leave a comment about what you're playing this game on, hardware-wise, and how it's going for you. And if you are playing on PC, are you doing what I'm doing? And that is spending most of your time keyboard and mousing, but when it comes to driving, you gotta reach for that controller, don't you? Because, oh my God, the driving on a keyboard is crap. Anyway, hello again, I am Blunty, and an hour before I went live on one of my weekend streams over on Twitch, I hacked my Cyberpunk 2077 executable file in the desperate hope of actually making it run at a stable and playable frame rate, without having to dumb down the otherwise lovely eye candy on offer. And certainly without turning off ray tracing, because I really quite like the ray tracing. So as revealed to me, in a Reddit post I stumbled across while researching a different issue I was having with the game to see if anyone else was having the same issue, short answer is yes they were, a lot of them, I came across a freshly posted article talking about a different issue I'd already noticed but couldn't do anything about. On the otherwise brutally powerful AMD Ryzen 9 3900X CPU I have in my gaming rig, woof, I noticed in Task Manager that Cyberpunk 2077 was not properly utilizing the simultaneous multi-threading functionality, SMT. It was, in effect, essentially completely ignoring fully one half of the 24 logical processors on the 12-core chip that are sitting there, just doing nothing. And the post I found detailed a way to literally hack the executable file using a hex editor and changing literally one single hex value in the entire file, the result of which is the game now correctly recognizes and fully utilizes the multi-threading available on all AMD Zen family CPUs. Intel architecture, by the way, seems completely unaffected by this bug and trying to use this fix, if you are running on Intel, apparently can cause some crashes, so don't do it if you're running Team Blue. Now the cause of this issue is either laziness or ignorance, or maybe it was just accidental. Either way, it seems when compiling the executable, a checkbox or an option somewhere was left unchecked or uncorrected or something. I'm not a code monkey and I only grok the surface level of this stuff, but whatever the issue, something's wrong with the file and the fix is easy. And indeed I would and do expect it to be included in the very next patch. And if it isn't, well, CD Projekt Red has a lot of goddamn explaining to do, don't they? Because it's an easy fix that some rando in the community found. Now, you've been seeing some A-B comparisons that I did while I've been explaining it. And to those of you who joined me on live stream, saw it for yourselves, live. And you may have noticed by now, there's not a great big difference in the frame rates, is there? I'm told this is a more impactful change on AMD CPUs with eight or fewer cores, while the likes of my 3900X will see more of a moderate kick. And of course, results and improvement gaps will vary, sometimes wildly, depending on settings, especially resolution, because you're going to be more CPU bound at 1080p than you are at 1440p, which is what I'm running. And of course, what DLSS mode you're using will affect it quite widely as well. In my own testing, and indeed on the stream, I didn't see a huge leap forward in average FPS. In fact, a lot of the time, as you've been seeing in these tests, it's close to the same. But in general gameplay, I did see several areas where I could easily reach 70 or even 80 FPS, where once upon a time I was jammed up against the arse end of 60, maybe even closer to 40. And elsewhere, I was holding 50 to 60 FPS much more stably and consistently than I was before. And in general, I felt a lot less stutter and hitching. It was experientially a lot smoother and seamless feeling, regardless of what the raw numbers might be telling you on these sort of setup tests on the screen. It's still not what I'd call ideal. This isn't a perfect fix. It doesn't solve all the issues in performance, and it still needs a lot of patches and fixes for all kinds of performance and bug-related stuff. But I am at least seeing a lot of excited reports on the Reddit threads from users on Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 chips saying they have had significant uplifts in stable FPS that bring it from miserable to very, very playable. But at least in my case, and especially with the settings that I prefer to use, 
In the short term, this little hack has lifted up those dreaded lows and dips and lag spikes, making the entire experience overall a lot more pleasant. And it has made the typically CPU bottleneck stuff, like very, very large crowds where there's a lot of activity and AI going on and driving at high speeds where the CPU is doing a lot more work pulling in and decompressing texture files and such a lot more faster than it would if you're on foot, all that kind of stuff. And there's something else I learned while doing this also. Even DLSS, something I had assumed, rather incorrectly as it turns out, was entirely GPU bound, as it, by nature, is functionally dependent on the specialized NVIDIA hardware they started building into their architecture with the 2000 and 3000 series of RTX cards. I mean, it's one of their flagship features, for crying out loud. But it seems CPU plays a part in the operation of DLSS too, as depending on the mode, there could be a few percent jack in FPS purely based on changing the DLSS mode and nothing more when it came to doing comparisons between with and without the CPU hack we're talking about here. And you can clearly see utilizing significantly more CPU as well. And just for demonstration purposes, as you can see with this test, you really, really do want to be using the best DLSS setting your system can possibly afford to run. Look carefully at the street vendor and especially at the lantern at the top to see why. DLSS is a kind of wonderful technological magic, but it ain't perfect. Now, of course, I've left a link to the posts in the down below that describe how to do this hack. But as always, with anything that means manually modifying your game files, especially the executable, danger city right there, you do so entirely at your own risk. I make no safety guarantees, nor do the folk who found this and published it to the community. This is informational only, and if everything goes sideways, then you've done it to yourself. And with luck, if you're still nervous about trying it for yourself, hopefully it will just be officially included in the next patch. Hopefully today or tomorrow, perhaps. CD Projekt Red, are you listening to the community? Because yeah, I played with the hacked executable for about 12 hours total yesterday on and off stream, and it was perfectly stable. No crashes, no unexpected behavior, no quirkiness or bugs outside of the stuff we have already been experiencing with this rickety game. And all that said, just on that note, goddamn, I am really enjoying this game. I am 40 hours deep in it already. And I'm loving it, despite all the infuriating and stupid bugs and crappy UI decisions that really do get under my skin sometimes. I get really cranky at them sometimes because they get in the way of what is otherwise a really fun game that's done really well and wonderful world building and texture. And oh, I love it. So what's your experience been? I mean, underneath it all, like I said, there's, there's, there is a golden game here. Hopefully, like the likes of The Witcher 3 and Skyrim before it, once it gets past its absolute clown orgy of a bug riddled launch, it will become known for the classic I think it might just deserve to be. Fingers crossed CD Projekt Red don't shit the bed. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and thank you as always to the patrons up above there. Your extra and above and beyond support mean a tremendous amount to me. Almost as much as ray tracing. No, more than ray tracing. Your support means more than ray tracing to me. And you know how much I like ray tracing because I like pretty things. I'm a visual guy. Thanks, guys.